Thank you. Okay. We are back with Mother Mary. Mother Mary, thank you for staying with us, considering some of the questions. I'm surprised you just didn't hightail it out of there. But, uh, yeah, thank you. (laughs) She says, no, no. Um, When you said hightail it out of there, she said, no, no. Oh, that's good. That's good. Listen, um, (laughs) what was Jesus like as a kid? First as a a preteen, I mean, you know, up until the teenage years, and then I want to know how what he was like as a teenager. She says, um, for her, raising him um, was was a different experience. She says that she always felt. Um, she says, you know how when you go home, and you've had a rough day at work, and. Um, she's going to sort of flip-flop it because we already did this like looking as to the mother point of view and now she's talking about the children. When you come home from a rough day at work, just seeing your kids just sort of makes all that nasty mm. energy go away. <clears throat> she says that's how it was for him, with him, my relationship with him, but it was all the time. She says I, I knew he had some ability to just cleanse me, cleanse my energy. Um, I just, it was constant, um, positive interaction. And she says, um, she, she also is talking about how comparing herself to others with children and their experience and, and sort of feeling like she couldn't relate, um, to other mothers because they might have had negative experiences with their children. Um, but she says, for her, I, I couldn't reach the depths of that negativity. I couldn't relate. So I knew something. I knew it was different. Mm-hmm. She says, I knew um, you knew this he child. Was different? You knew he was different? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she says, I knew this child and my relationship with him <clears throat> was unlike any, any other. So she says, that sort of diminished quickly, like her comparing to others. And by the time he was a teenager... Um, she didn't compare anymore. She knew he was different. Mm. But she says he was very um, naturally skilled. Um, it was... Oh, that's neat. I, she said he was... He, he just was... He could do anything he wanted to. He was mm. naturally skilled at anything. And I said, oh, wow, like what? And she said, well, anything. He, he believed in himself. Yeah. So he could do it. Do anything. <clears throat> so... That, um, she says, watching him interact with others and try to teach them how to believe in themselves. Mm. She says, the way, and she's also saying that you can relate, um, Elisa, she says, the way that he got people to look at themselves and believe in themselves was powerful for me as a mother. It was, um, she said, he made my job easy. She said, you know, raising him, watching him affect others' lives. She's kind of like speechless. Um, Watching him and the way that he changes their lives was um, made her proud, but proud doesn't really encompass the greatness of her energy and what she's trying to express. Was he ever Um, a fussy baby? She kind of laughed and said, oh, yeah, and she's showing like... um, you know, throwing over the shoulder, but I feel like, um, the, (laughs) well, of course she says the, I said, what was the fussiness from? And she said, being misunderstood. (laughs) Oh yeah, of course. That's, that's common. That's normal. Um, but she says, uh, um, she says it was hard. She's talking about how, um, facing a lot of criticism, facing a lot of, um, judgment and also gossip Mm. as to who this child was, how he came in, what his purpose is, um, that could have been sort of like derailing for her. Mm. She says, but um, as long as I stayed connected with my baby, she says, that's all I needed because, um, because of others she knew a lot of the uh, criticism came from jealousy. Mm. Um, there was something pure and um, mystic about the whole yeah. birth of my child and 
part of that was um, jealousy, the criticism that she received. So for a while, she's saying that it it scared her. The criticism scared her. It didn't make her angry or anything. It she says it scared her um, because she she's talking about how she wouldn't um, sort of speak to other people that way or accuse yeah. people um, or anything like that. So when people did that to her, it was very shocking yeah. and it scared her. Um, so it's kind of, again, she's going back to that concept that, um, you know, you you can only see in the world what you're capable of inside. Yeah. Um, so for her, she wasn't capable of, of I guess the, those negative remarks, mm. but when they came to her, it was it was shocking, and yeah. she didn't understand. Plus, she didn't know how were... that baby got in there too, right? wasn't Wasn't there that? She says it was um, learning. You know, all along, like um, through the pregnancy and raising the baby, raising him. She says, I was learning the whole time what this was about. I was learning. Um, the meaning and the purpose behind this the whole time. So, but she says all along there was a sense of knowing that there was something greater about this. So oh, I had to stay. Oh, go ahead. She says um, I had to stay attached to that thought in order to not let others um, affect me, not let others um, critical remarks, anything like yeah. that, kind of separate her from her and then she's talking about um people actually wanted to separate her from jesus oh well when, when you were pregnant when you finally realized you were pregnant and you know you did not have any kind of uh, sexual relations what did you think what do you think that was all about she's um again she's saying um part of her was naive in um Kind of just identifying with it very easily, <clears throat> um, just accepting it. She was just very accepting, like, okay, this is going to happen. So when I realized I was pregnant, um, I knew that I was just sort of answering something that, um, or being a part of something that I was called to do. Mm. So um, it was, she doesn't really attach a whole lot to the emotion of it being scary for her. Okay. It was... Um, but did she know it was the son of God? Did she figure that out? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she says that there was like a sense of knowing the whole time um, that this was from God, from the greater okay. source. Um, she says, and the whole time, you know, she faced criticism and raising him and comparing herself. There was still in the back of her heart, in the back of her mind, she says, there's still a sense of knowing that there was a, a bigger purpose behind this okay. and that this was... A God, a godly child, okay. God's child. She's so he never had any moodiness as a teenager. The typical teenage kind of sullen, cantankerous um, manner. Wow! Did he get no. along with the siblings? I don't even know if he had any siblings. I don't either. Um, this is how she answers that. She says. Um, he got along with everybody, oh. and here's why. Um, the purest form and most absolute form of self-acceptance, absolute, she says, allows you oh. and allows him to accept others. So there was no need to, to argue or fight. So he, he that man, she's giving me this huge sense of accepting himself in, in so many ways that, mm. you know, if... if Somebody came to him and there was an argument. He had already accepted that part of himself. So there was no need to sort of like reciprocate those negative emotions or, you know, argumentative emotions. Must be nice. It, it seems like it's far beyond what we can en um, encompass or even understand as humans. Yeah. Um, what's looking for? Comprehend. Yeah. Like it, it's. And then she also said he, under he understood that. Um, Everybody else around him was a dynamic of him, was a part of him too. Oh. So he, she says, think about it. Man. Um, she says, if we all operated that way and understanding that even strangers are part another of part of us, yeah. would you treat them um, 
we treat ourselves as best as we can. Mm -hmm. So um, most of the time, would you treat anybody else any different? She mm -hmm. says, you're supposed, they're the same as you. They are you. Yeah. Just expressed a little differently, she says. So he was capable of that in the purest form. Mm -hmm. um, and it just the way he interacted taught so many. He didn't even have to speak. She says the way he interacted um, and reacted taught so many people. Um, well, did he come and, down with spiritual amnesia? In other words, I mean, without spiritual amnesia, where, you know, we, we forget, we incarnate, we forget that we came from that other dimension and that we were spirits and with all these abilities. Yeah, she, when you said, did he come down with spiritual amnesia, she said no. Okay. Like he... I feel like growing up, he was aware that he was he was very different. He okay. was directly, in the highest sense, connected to, to God. Okay. Now, what about the three kings? Did they really come come and bring Jesus uh, three things? And if so, were they what they said? They were the frankincense, myrrh, and something or other. <clears throat> this is interesting. Really. Uh, yeah, she says there were three, and she actually makes me feel like, um, I hope this doesn't ruffle any feathers, but she says that the gifts were the same, so um, frankincense and myrrh, the, she says the gifts were the same, but she actually makes me feel like they became kings. I feel like these oh. were, this is tough, because this, you know, this is just all I've ever known, raised mm. as a kid, but um, she makes me feel like they... Um, there was sort of there's a common sense about them, common okay. people. Then when they came and brought the gifts, they became kings, like in those moments. Magi, yeah. So, okay. Huh. Why? Interesting. I because mean, where's of, my throne? I bring people uh, when they have newborns. I bring them presents all the time. Where's my <laughs> throne and my crown? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> She says, don't forget your staff and rod. <laughs> there we go. That's it. She says, um, because of their complete dependency on, like they brought gifts, but sort of blindly. They knew it was something great, but they trusted their faith. They trusted in something that they didn't understand. They had faith in something that they didn't quite understand. So um for them, in those moments, it was sort of being awarded for having that faith or belief. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how you see it. She says, that's how you see it today, because I asked her to relate to your question. And she said, that's how you see it today. If you maintain faith, um, hope, belief, whatever you would like to call it, she says, um, you will be rewarded. Your rewards are many, mm -hmm. she says. Um, so just uh, various types, I guess. Um, but if you can trust without having to know, you will be rewarded. So it's sort of like okay. let go of the mind and just uh, listen to the heart. Okay. Like follow the heart, that trust. All right, real quick. Are you incarnated on the earth now? Just a yes or no. We're running out of time. No. Okay. She says no. Will you? Do you plan to incarnate in terms of linear earth time in the future? She says it's it's a possibility, but she she would like to. She be she makes me feel like um, I don't feel like anytime soon. Okay, well, uh, you know, there's so many things where they see your apparition, you know, or all of a sudden your likeness is in a piece of cheese or something, whatever. Are some of the I know all of them aren't true, but are some of them true that you show apparitions or likenesses of yourself uh, to people? Um, she says absolutely, and her energy is getting really strong. So um, she says yes, and this is to sort of like awaken, sort of awaken people um, when they need it most. She's kind of laughing and says when they need it most. So kind of when you get jaded in your everyday routine, um, she it's like she likes to just kind of come in and give them a wake-up call, but not oh, in nice. a in but just to kind of restore that part of you. 
she says. Yeah, it says this one is kind of the same. I'd like to know if the Virgin Mary really does appear in certain places on earth known for for same, such as Medjugorje. I'm not certain of other locations, but Fatima and Lourdes are ringing a bell. Guadalupe, too? Just curious if those claims are true, and so why she chose those places in particular. That's cool, because she was actually answering the latter part of the question first. Oh, okay. The why. Um, she says, um, there, she says there's a whole truth to collective consciousness. Okay. And what that does to, um, not just allow her to, to make apparitions or make things happen, but the ability for people in that region to perceive it. Um, so she says, I'm not localized. I'm not limited to being localized anywhere, but, um, there are shifts in frequency waves, like energetic waves, mm. in which she's very strong in some areas because she's actually showing me like, um, man, um, there must be somewhere, this is crazy, <laughs> there mm. must be somewhere where, um, she's showing me like actual porcelain statues, like crying. Wow, um, and really? And she caused causes them to do that but I can't figure out where when I ask her mm. where is this happening um, well, I, that's okay like, it's not important but that um, that's, that's says fine. it's the energy that's in that area oh, you're that getting allows, all sciencey on us uh, Mother Mary that's cool energetic yeah, waves and that stuff allows you to see it yeah it allows you to to feel my presence all right what was the actual a, calendar day that your uh, precious son Jesus was born Sorry to interrupt, but I just don't no, have that's okay. much time left. She's going, she takes me to, okay, so when I say, um, you know, take me, show me on a calendar what time, when was, when was he born? If I'm looking between um, December 24th and December 25th, mm -hmm. I feel like it's, um, like, I seriously want to say, like, at the stroke of midnight, <laughs> As we're shifting onto the next calendar day, onto the 25th. So I okay. feel like it was... Um, wow. All right. That exact moment. What happened to you after Jesus was crucified? You went on to live your life, I guess, with Joseph or... Did you she stay? says that she... Um, she says that she did. She calls herself um, a common woman. Mm -hmm. She lived a common lifestyle. But she says that she, um, she after understanding what happened with her son, she sort of introverted, that's what she was doing with her energy, um, understanding the power and realizing the power behind it. So um, I feel like she just lived a very humble, quiet life um, with Joseph and just nothing out of the norm. She just shows me doing chores and okay. uh, like cleaning and, and working on you know, the land outside of her home. Um, she says that she was very, very kept to herself, um, because it's like she understood the sacredness of what happened and she didn't want anything to sort of change that for her yeah. or take that away from her. So she kind of kept that very, like in very tight and introverted. Um, where, where were you and how did you die? Where were you when you died? When I ask her, um, where were you, how did you die, she's answering the latter first. Um, this is interesting. She, she's pointing to her heart. Um, I feel like she passed from... Um, it's funny because when I see this symbol, usually it represents heart health issues, but I don't feel like it's a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing for her. Um, you died of a broken two heart? Things. That's what she's showing me uh, energetically, symbolically. And then I also feel like she had illness, like infection, because I see her sweating and like feverish. Okay. Um, Was it an infection? So must... Was, did you have like pneumonia, for example? 
I think so. I think it, it was some sort of infection because she's showing me it running through her bloodstream, like it affecting all of her. And um, mm. she had a, I think actually, I think the fever is what took her because she's yeah. showing me like sweating and sweating and sweating. And then I feel like that was the source of her transition physically. Where, where was the source of the, of the infection? The kidneys, uh, a, a wound, pneumonia. Um, immediately when you asked that, she pointed to her foot. So it's like she stepped on something, um, oh, okay. had a slipper in her foot that got into her bloodstream. Um, but then I feel like a whole chain of events happened. I feel like she was already compromised because of a broken heart. Yeah. And then having this infection um, and being down also triggered pneumonia because when you asked her if she had pneumonia, her energy got stronger. <coughs> So okay, um, but well, you I feel become like, septic and it goes to the lungs and all that. So yeah, it could be all over the place. Yeah. But originally, how old were you? Hmm. More she less. looks to be um, between her. I she looks like she's in her fifties. Like she's oh, just showing wow. me that. What was your transition um, like? And did you meet Jesus? She says, of course I met him. Of course he met me, she says. Um, she, her transition was very, she says she was grateful for her transition because she was pre prepared. No matter how she went, she said, I, I knew that I was going to go back to a safe place. I knew I was going to go home. So it didn't matter how or when that time came, she was ready. Um, so she says, um, her transition, she was just very ready is the feeling that she gives me. Like, I feel like it's um, very fever related. She keeps taking me all to the head um, and knowing, having that sense of knowing that it was her time and being okay with it, she says. Okay. Now, uh, somebody wants to know if uh, anyone else in the family shared this same kind of awareness that Jesus had. In other words, was there any hereditary component to it? I would feel like no. Um, yeah, she's kind of laughing, and she says no. Um, this was a very special case, she says. It sounds like, um, yeah, very special case, to put it mildly. Yeah. <laughs> she's laughing because, you know, English can only do so much to encompass what is happening energetically. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> so, what was, oh, man. What was the most profound lesson you learned from your son? And then two more questions, and that's it. Complete self-acceptance, self-love. Mm -hmm. So you have self being dependent on yourself from Joseph and accepting yourself from Jesus. That's, that's nice. Yeah, and she says if you can achieve that self-love, complete self-love, everything else is going to reciprocate that back to you, oh, yeah. whether it's... Um, oh. Nature or people, she says, everything else is going to reciprocate that back to you. So, yeah, guys, so love I yourself. Saw... Love yourself. Yeah. Love yourself. Yeah. Now, well, what she was says, the... I forgot to ask one thing. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Real quick, she was just saying that she saw that in the way, that's what Jesus taught her in the way that he lived, that what he gave, the way he loved himself was reciprocated back to him. Mm -hmm. Um through his personal interactions, you know, um, mm -hmm. through the one-on-one -on -one interactions with people. So, anyhow, what were you going to say? Go ahead. Uh, I forgot to ask, what was the first words exchanged between you and your son when you transitioned? She's showing me um, Jesus greeting her and, like, sort of pulling her in. And... What I hear him say is, um, welcome home. Mm -hmm. And for her, it's so, it's so sweet. It's, um, I knew like she keeps, it's this complete epiphany feeling like this interaction, like everything, all the pieces finally came together, all the pieces oh. of the puzzle at that moment. But still she, when he says, welcome home, she so having that complete knowing of what his purpose was mm -hmm. in that moment, she looked at him and I see, I see him like off to her left. Um, she looked at him and said, I knew. Mm -hmm. So being able to convey that to him, um, she says, sharing that with him in that pure sense 
Their mother knows. Was, yeah, it was so meaningful to her to be able mm. to finally make that connection. All right, what are you doing now in the afterlife? This person says, what you up to now? What do you like to do? <laughs> she says um, she really likes to teach people and um, humans work with people on how to achieve personal she's funny she she's um, starting to show her personality a little more she says grace like that okay so what she means is how to teach them to not be so reactive to teach them how to just um, calm their energy and understand something before they want to react she says the, again the way that my son was able to maintain that um, I want to help people achieve the same thing because I saw okay. the lifestyle he lived and so many. So she loves That's helping awesome. people too. Is there, yeah. can you say, name one of the biggest errors uh, or misconceptions uh, in the Bible? One thing that you feel like was wrong? Oh my goodness. Just <laughs> the biggest goes, one, biggest one. Yeah, she goes, I don't know where to start. Ooh. Okay, so where's the biggest? She's, she's just rambling. She says, um, there are so many misconceptions. Probably the biggest is um, that, um, like, her, I don't know what, what this is all about, like, that her and her son didn't have a relationship or didn't have a friendship, um, a mother, just a regular mother and son interactive relationship. Um, Aside from everything else and knowing that this was a bigger purpose, um, we had a very personal mother-son relationship. Um, okay. This is one thing that she wants to be known. She's very important. This is very important, she says. Um, but there's so many. I feel like she's, she's like asking if we can do another session. Uh, does she, the Bible want to know that uh, according to your son, he didn't really die on the cross, so that's kind of a big one. Now, I, I forgot to ask you, Mary Magdalene, how did you get along with her? Did you like her? Um, well, yes, she liked her. But when you said, how did you get along with her, I feel like it was very back and forth. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. She says it was very much back and forth, but... Um, she's still grateful for, again, there's polarity there. She brought a sense of polarity and seeing different sides of people. And she's grateful for the perspective she gained through that relationship, she says. Okay. Now, last question. What do you think about my son, Eric? We both sacrificed sons for uh, something greater. She, um, she's going to make me cry. <laughs> oh, probably me too. Jeez, oh, poor kid. Um, I know, jeez, I'm such a crybaby. <laughs> oh. She, she stood him, she stood Eric, um, next to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, poor you. You don't have to go on if you don't want to, baby. It's okay. And she said, um. See how similar? <laughs> so she said, see how much they're alike. She's very, um, just sort of like delighted is the type of energy she gives. She's very um, happy, very elated, sort of when she talks about Eric. And she says, see how similar? Um, selfless in giving to want to see others um, accomplish or rise up. Yeah. So um, she just... She's pointing at you. She says she wants you to know that too and see that um, he's very selfless because in wanting because he wants to he wants to sort of sacrifice at his own expense to see others do better. Um, this is a true form of purity. This is what purity is. She says when she's defining Eric. <clears throat> okay. Well, so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I feel such a connection with you because we both lost our sons so <clears throat> she says um, in the true essence of everything involved there's no difference between me and you she says we're just the same I don't know about that well thank you so much and Eric thank you <laughs> Kim thank you for having to go through this wow 
You're welcome. Yeah, it's just the image that she shows that gets me so choked up. It's so pretty yeah. and oh. and her emotions too. So, you know, I'm always honored to be in this position. Mm. So, thank That's you. Awesome. Uh, Mother Mary, thank you so much. I love you with all my heart. She says I love you and she sort of just like did a slow bow. <laughs> okay, Eric, so. I love you, sweetie. I'll see you next time. Kim, thank you so much, baby. You're so welcome. Eric says I love you, Mom, and he's like rubbing my back. He's like, go take a breather. <laughs> yeah, you better. All right. Bye, everybody. Stay tuned for the messages to follow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.